Hello everyone, welcome to AWS Migration Import Export Part 2. This is the final migration tool which I want to discuss and in this session we'll discuss VM Import Export. This works only if you want to migrate virtual machines to EC2 instances. AWS recommends that we should use server migration service rather than VM Import Export if the application is pretty huge but it, it is still a better option if your application is small. This is our agenda. We'll have an introduction on VM Import Export different virtual machine products, image instance and snapshot import and finally pricing. VM import export can be used to import VM images or virtual machine images from existing virtualized environment to EC2. Remember existing virtual machine images only. If you have physical servers, then those have to be converted to virtual machines using P2V before this product can be used. It works the other way around also. EC2 instances can also be exported from AWS and import it to data center as virtual machine images. These are the virtual machine products which are supported as of now. This means that if your virtual machines have been created using any one of these products, then those can be migrated using VM import export. So the products can be either Microsoft Hyper-V or Citrix Zen or VMware. Different use cases of VM import export are of course to migrate applications, typically smaller ones, for bigger applications, server migration service should be used. VM import export can also be used to create disaster recovery sites also. If you want your DR to be on AWS, then VM import export can be used to create on-premise DR applications on AWS. A few words on various products to create virtual machine images. VM import export supports these products only. VMware vSphere, Hyper-V and Citrix Zen. I'll explain taking example of VMware. This is our hardware as in CPU, RAM, storage, network, etc. We install ESXi hypervisor to run virtual machines on this server. Then vSphere client can be used to manage virtual machines on ESXi. We have already discussed this in our SMS session. Using vSphere, we have launched multiple virtual machines, all hosting some applications or the other. vSphere gives an admin console that can be used to take backup of these virtual machines and create something called VMDK files, which are nothing but snapshots of, of virtual machines. If vSphere ESXi is used, then the type of file that is created is VMDK. If you use Microsoft Hyper-V, then the virtual machine backup file would be of type VHD or VHDX. There are other file types also like OVA, OVX and RAW. Having said that, let's see how VM import export works. The first option which can be used is image import. In image import, virtual machine backup files like VMDK files are converted to AMIs or Amazon machine images. This is your corporate data center and you want to move some or all applications to AWS cloud. Let's say this is one of the servers where an application is hosted and the requirement is to migrate this application to AWS. This is a comparatively small application which is hosted on a VM or virtual machine. How to achieve this goal using VM import exports image import. Using vSphere, this virtual machine has to be backed up and converted to VMDK file type. Then you create an S3 bucket on AWS. Backup file can be of type VMDK, VHD, RAW or OVA. Then this file is copied or imported to S3. This is pretty simple. You can use AWS S3 CLIs or SDKs to copy the file from on-premise data center to AWS. You already know how to do it because you have already seen how to use AWS CLI. But you need to have connectivity between data center and AWS. Our internet can also be used, which is of course not suggested. Once the VMDK file is copied over to S3, we can use this EC2 CLI command import image to create an AMI. And the rest of the story is simple, launch an EC2 instance from the AMI. So the only thing which you have to note here is to use this command AWS EC2 import image to create an AMI from the VMDK file which is there on S3 bucket. Second option is instance import. Everything is same. We, we create a VMDK file using vSphere and import it to S3, S3 bucket. From the VMDK file, instead of creating an AMI, you can opt to create a stop instance as well. If you see only supported VM file types are VMDK, VHD and RAW. OVA file is not supported. Here we use a different command 
AWS EC2 import instance, not import image, which you used in the last case. So using import instance, we can create a stopped instance. And from this stopped instance, we can create AMIs and launch running EC2 instances from it. The final one is snapshot import, which is used to create EBA snapshots from virtual machine backup files. Supported file types are VMDK, VHD, and RAW. We use a different command here. Rest of the things are same. Use vSphere to create VMDK image and then import it to S3. And this time, use a different command. That command is import snapshot to create EBS snapshots. From these EBS snapshots, you can launch EBS volumes and you can attach these EBS volumes to EC2 instances. So this is all about VM import export, which is part of EC2. It can be used to migrate very small applications. Do not use this if, you, if your applications are pretty large. Here's the pricing of import-export. It's entirely free. The only pricing which you'll incur is S3 storage price and EBS volume and snapshot price. There are other migration tools available as well. For example, to migrate databases, we use schema conversion tool and database migration tool to perform both homogeneous and heterogeneous database migrations. Homogeneous migration is where the source and destination database engines are same. For example, migrating on-premise Oracle database to Oracle RDS. Heterogeneous migration is where database engines are different. For example, if you want to migrate on-premise Oracle database to RDS MySQL. Then we have application discovery services also, which can be used to find out the application dependencies in your on-premise environment. This is still at nascent stage. Third-party tools can also be used to migrate applications from on-premise data centers to AWS. That's all about VM import export. Thanks for watching.